This is my Variac. It's basically a variable transformer that you can set from 0 to 240 volts. And it puts out AC or unsmooth DC. And during shipping, its meter suffered a bit of damage. So since I've not got a, a matching meter for this, I finally got round to 3D printing a bezel that will take a digital meter and I can just basically screw that bezel down. I can snap this in. I had an instant, by the way. I... Uh, 3D printed this, and before doing it in the FL Sun Q5, I gave it a wipe over with isopropyl alcohol. That turned out to be a bad idea. It adhered to the build plate with such force that when I tried getting it off afterwards, I couldn't get it off. I let it cool down, and then when I finally managed to get it off, it came off with a bit of the build plate, actually a bit of the glass del well, delaminated from the, from the glass plate. Very odd. Unexpected. Anyway, I've digressed already. So here is the Variac, and let me show you what's inside. When you rotate the knob, it has a wiper arm that makes contact with a common connection, and then this is like a toroidal transformer, where the windings have been brought up in a little ramp, and they've been pressed flat, and then the surface has just been buffed off. And as you wipe this arm round, it basically goes from one end of the transformer to the other, giving you a perfect AC output at... Uh, Fairly low current, in this case about 750 milliamps, and that's 750 milliamps whether it's right round at the 240 or it's in the middle position at say 120 volts. And something that's always puzzled me about these is, generally speaking it's considered bad if you short the windings on a transformer or a motor, it's quite often the main cause of failure. You, a motor burns out, the windings short together and then lots of current passes through that winding and it goes up in smoke. In this case, uh, you have this brush that goes round, and I thought maybe it just doesn't touch two windings at once, but it does. And I've looked, I've seen various theories for how this works, that it doesn't short out the windings. One is that possibly the windings are high enough resistance that it doesn't really matter. Another uh, suggests that maybe the carbon is a special type that only can touch longitudinally like fibres, but that wouldn't really have, you know, that wouldn't be a significant effect. Uh, and I'd expect to see that heating up. And I do have a thermal image of this to show what's actually going on inside. But that, uh, I actually took this carbon brush off and I measured at the meter long ways and sideways and no difference. So it just seems an ordinary carbon brush. But it's been very interesting. The thermal image has shown a lot. So I'm just going to tuck this out of the way. And I'm going to bring in the thermal image. And I shall focus down onto that. So the thermal image shows the where the brush has made contact, the windings are heating at that point. So they are bridging out and there is basically shorted turns, but the current isn't that much. It also showed that there is already an inherent shorted turn here. And I wondered why these ones were shorted as well at the end, that you were getting a definite heat signature off them. The temperature isn't massive. Incidentally, I used uh, the I used the Fleur with uh, Christoph's lenses that he sent me, the 50mm and the 101mm, to actually get up close to this. That's why that's a fairly high-resolution image. They work really well, those lenses. But... Um, <clears throat> It showed those uh, heat spots, and it wasn't as hot as I was expecting. Uh, 36.4. I don't know if those lenses affect the, the accuracy of the temperature reading. I don't think it does. Um, certainly, it was showing less, but it's really... What we're seeing here is when you weren't looking through the lens, you were seeing quite thin stripes, because that is just basically individual turns. I was trying to find the uh, the what where that shorted out. I couldn't see it. Even through a microscope, I couldn't see it. But these bits at the end are very interesting. Let me show you why. If I bring in my notepad here, so this is typically the sort of layout of one of these things. It's a transformer with a winding with zero volts neutral at one end, 240 volts at the other. I'll zoom down this a little bit. And you have a sliding contact that can slide along that transformer from zero up to 240. Now, the advantage you could use a a rheostat. You could use a resistor, but they tend to get very hot. This being a transformer doesn't, although it is limited to that quite low current. As this uh, brush rotates round, the shape of the windings is quite odd. They've been sort of wound round and then pressed into a shape, so they rise into a little peak that comes up to the carbon brush, and then they duck down. 
And when they duck down the inside of the triroid transformer, there's an insulator over the edge, an insulating bush, and then there's the metal contact that this slip ring uh, rubs around, and it's the common, it's the output from this thing, the tap that it's taking off the windings. The brush itself rubs across the top of the windings that are basically just all laid next to each other, but then buffed flat at the top. And as it rubs round, it just makes contact with one or two or more, potentially, as it passes round. Now, the reason the ends were hot is odd. To avoid terminating onto what is very, very thin wire, uh, the windings came round to the end, and all they'd done was it had all been potted and uh, lacquered into place, and all they'd done is they'd buffed the surface of several windings, and they'd soldered across them like a solder pad. So inherently, the windings at the end are actually shorted out. It's quite interesting. It's intriguing. It kind of makes sense how it works now, and I suppose with a bigger variac, it would be more complex, it'd be more losses. Now, if I bring the, the thing back up, and I set an arbitrary position, for those now, if this is going to make more sense, let me just uh, focus on this. If this is going to make more sense, here is the slip ring, there's a carbon brush, nylon bush to... Uh, connected to the handle and it just wipes around those windings like that and I would show you the end. Can I show you the end? Where is a, a little flashlight? Where it's terminated on? I may have to zoom down here. If I shine the light in here, can you see the little solder connection at the bottom where it's just soldered onto the side of the windings like that? It's quite neat. This is quite a thick layer of uh, lacquer. It's quite a complex transformer. But let's stick it on the Copy and see what the losses are with all those shorted turns. So here is the hoppy. I'm going to plug this in with its fetching red MK plug. And when I plug it in, the losses are about 4.7 watts. And as I vary this, well, the needle is moving a little bit. Well, the needle's actually, it's still moving on the meter. But as I vary this, the losses don't really, they, they fluctuate up and down as it passes windings and different windings get bridged together. But the, the losses really aren't that significant. It's quite impressive. Power factor, partly because it's not loaded, is 0.98, which is really very good. And it shows that a current of 18 milliamps is passing, which, well, 18 milliamps isn't that much, is it? It's very odd. Strange. Uh, so that answers that question. And now all I need to do is get the bezel on and then we can use this for doing various tests. I'm still trying to work out why. I put a bridge rectifier in and gave, uh, gave like unsmoothed DC output. I'm not sure why I did that, but I did. It's just one of those things. I'll also need to change this from a two core flex to a three core theoretically because this metal plate, actually I think that's into insulators. I don't think I need an earth in that. That's probably why I did it in the first place. But there we go. Interesting stuff. How a Variac works, and it does actually short the turns as it rotates.